manipulation and we have just explored the concepts how we can create dom elements using javascript okay so in today's session also uh, let's explore a little bit about this uh, dom elements today uh, i want to do something like this i want to create one document in that document i want to add one title okay then i want to add some paragraph here some kind of paragraph then i want one button i want one button okay so this is how i want to create user interface using html now if i click on this button if i click on of this button then i want one table should be created and in that table i want to display some information in that table i want to display some information okay so whenever i click on this button one table should be created in that table i want to display some information uh, let me show you one example so how it should look okay if i just scroll down here somewhere i will able to find it. Okay, if I just paste it. Okay, now see here I have a title. I have a paragraph. Now, instead of this radio buttons, I want one button here. I just want one button. Okay, so initially, whenever I load my page, I should be able to see only this title. I want to see, show this paragraph and I want to show one button. That's it. Now, if I click on button, if I click on button, I want to create this kind of table. I want to create this kind of table. Okay. Whenever I click on the button, I want to show this kind of table. And in that table, I want to display some data here. I want to show some data here. Maybe in future, like maybe in tomorrow's session, we will do filtering also. Like if you see here, here I am displaying all users information, all users means I have female also, I have male also. Now, if I click on male, it should this table should show me only male users information. Only male users. If I click on female, it should show me only female users information. Okay. So this kind of task I want to implement. So let's see how we can do. So let's go step by step. So let me close all this. Let me delete this part. Hmm. Now here I am creating something called user.html. Now as per my requirement, I want one heading here. I am taking H2. I am saying here user details. I need one paragraph. Okay, I am just adding one paragraph here. And in that, I am adding some content, some random content. And I want one button here. Okay, something like get users. That's it. I want one button like get users. Now, if I load this document in my browser, it looks like this. It looks something like this. If you want to add some styles, you can add some styles. So what I will do, this entire thing, whatever I have created, this entire thing, I will wrap inside one div. I will create one div. Inside that, I will wrap it. Okay. Uh, guys, one minute. Yeah. Okay. I have taken one div. In that div, I have just wrapped all these things. Now for this div, I just want to add some styles. So I'm creating one 
user dot css file. I'm selecting that div. In that div, I just want to add some padding, something like fifty pixel. Okay, padding fifty pixel. Now this CSS file I want to integrate with my HTML file, so I can use my link tag here. So already we know right how to integrate CSS with HTML. So here I am taking real equals to style sheet and href equals to the location of my HTML file. Oh, sorry, CSS file. Now if I go back here. Now see, you got some padding here. Some padding has been added. If you want to create, you can create one nav bar here and you can add one nav bar also. If you want to create one nav bar, you can create one nav bar also. I'm just creating very basic nav bar. So here I'm taking something like header. Inside that header, I'm just adding here one H2. And simply I'm saying like uh, my first page with javascript yeah. my first page with javascript and to this header i want to add some styles i'm selecting this header adding some background color like black color i'm saying white let's see how it looks now and maybe i will add height something like 70 pixels if I go back here, it looks something like this. Okay, here we are getting some space, right? That is because of H2. So what I can do, I can select all the elements in my document. And by default, if it has some margin, just make it zero pixel. Okay, if I add asterisk means you are selecting all the elements in your document and whatever margin they have, initially make it zero pixel. Now it looks something like this. Okay, now we can make a little bit flex this header. I can make display flex and justify content center and align item center. Uh, align items, uh, let's, say, let's see center how it looks. It looks something like this. My first page with JavaScript. So what we did, this header, whatever header we have taken, we made it flex. So whenever we you make header as a flex, H2 became your flex item. And that flex item you can display anywhere, right? So I'm displaying exactly in the center. So my first page with JavaScript. Okay. Now if you see here, for this uh, H2 and for this button, we don't have any space here. If you want, you can add some space. So what I can do, I can select here my H2. I can select my paragraph and I can select button. For all these elements, I want to add margin top. Margin top as maybe something like 30 pixel. If I say 30 pixel, it looks like this. Okay, 30 pixel is so much. Maybe I will add 10 pixel. If I add 10 pixel, it looks like this. Okay, now we got some page design. We got some page design. Now, my requirement is very simple. If I click on this button, if I click on this button, one table should be created here. Okay. So how your table looks in your HTML, if you see your table will be something like this, right? You have to create one table element. In that table, you will have so many rows. You will have so many rows. You will have so many columns. Now, if you are creating the table, you have to decide how many columns it should have and how many rows it should have. How many columns it should have, how many rows it should have. Okay, so let's go step by step. First thing, whenever I click on this particular button, okay, whenever I click on this particular button, I want to do some task. What is that task? I want whenever I click on this button, I want to do some task or I can say I want to do some action. What is that action or task? I want to create one table. Okay. So for that, we require JavaScript. So here I am creating JavaScript file user.js. Now all my JavaScript code I want to write here. 
So I'm simply creating a function here, function create table. Now inside this function, I need to write the logic so that one table will be created. Okay, but when you should call this function, whenever I click on this button, it means whenever I click on click, whenever I click on this button, that create table function should be called. Now we have a separate JavaScript file. So this file we have to integrate with our HTML. So we can use here script attack. And we can add SRC equals to here. We can simply say user.jx. Now we are maintaining three different files. In HTML file, we have only HTML code. We have only HTML code. In CSS file, we have only CSS code. In JavaScript file, we have only JavaScript code. Okay, so here we have code separation. Suppose if you write everything in HTML, if you write CSS code and JavaScript code also in HTML file, then your HTML file looks very complex. It looks very complex and it looks very heavy. Okay, so to keep everything systematic, to keep everything uh, in their separate space, what we are doing, we are just creating two different files. One CSS file, one JavaScript file. CSS code we are adding in CSS. JavaScript code we are adding in JavaScript. So in your real time, this is what the approach we will follow. We will never write CSS and JavaScript code in HTML document. So we will have a separate files for that. Okay, done. Now, here what we need to do. Whenever this function is called, what we want to do. First, I want to create one table. In the table also, I should create one table element. Okay, here I wanted to create one table. Like this table should be created. So how to create table for that we require a table element. So first create this table element. How to create this table element? So yesterday we have seen right how to create any DOM element. For that we have to use document dot create element function. Now, which element you want to create table element, then just pass the name of that tag table. Now, what it will do, what this line will do, it will create one table element for you. So just cache in one reference. One table element is created. Now, in this table element, what you will have in every table, you will have three sections, right? Table head, table body, table footer. If you want to create, you can create those table head, table body, table footer. But I don't want to go with that complex process. I just want to create a simple table. Table in which I, I want some rows. Maybe I want uh, four rows. Row one, row two, row three and four. I want to create four rows like this. It means how many rows we need to create? Four rows. Four rows means we have to create four TR tags. Again, how to create TR? Simply we have to say document document dot create element of TR. Now it will create one TR just cache in one reference TR one. So we created one row like this. I want four rows. So I'm creating four rows. Okay. Here you have to just change the variable name. I have created four rows, one table, and then I have created four rows. Uh, is it clear up to here? Any doubts? Anyone have any confusion or any doubts? Understood what I done? Created one table, created four rows. Okay. Now all, all these are created separately. Here table, like this only table is created. And here only TR is created. Only TR is created. Now like this, how many TR created? Four TR. Now all this four TR, all this four TR we have to add inside our table. We have to add inside our table. How to add all these TRs inside the table? 
So for that already we have a table reference here, table dot append child. What you want to append? I want to append tr1. So here tr1. Now whenever this line gets executed, at that time inside the table, inside your table, one tr will be added. Okay, like this, I want to add all my TRs inside the table. So here TR2, here TR3, here TR4. So whenever this line gets executed, one more TR will be added here. Whenever this line gets executed, one more TR will be added. Whenever this line gets executed, all the TR will be added. So this is how the, your code will ex get executed internally. First, we created just a table. We created sub all the TR separately. Now all this TR we have to add in the table. So we are using append child. So this TR1 is added into table. TR2 is added into table. So once TR1 is added into table, now your element look like this. TR2 added into the table, your element look like this. Element 3 added, you, your element look like this. Now table 4 added, your element look like this. Okay. Now in the first TR, in the first TR, I need to create columns. Let's suppose I want to create three columns. Column 1, column 2 and 3. In first row, I want to create three columns. So in your table, in your first row, if you want to create columns, which element we will use? In your table, in your first row, if I want to create columns, which element we will use? Or which tag we will use? Mm -hmm. In my table, if I have first row, in first row, if I want to create columns, uh, we will go with th, not td. We will use th, right? We can use td, but always your in your table, the first row will be always your table headings. So we create column using th. Now, how many columns I want? Three columns. It means I need to create three th. And how many rows we created? Four. I need to create three th. So again, the same process. So I will add here var th1 equals to document dot create element of th. Like this, how many th you want? I want totally 3 th. 2 and 3. Three th we created. Now this all the three th we have to add in my first row. All the three th I need to add in my first row. So tr1 in first row you append child. What you want to append child th1. So in my tr1 append one more child. One more child. What you want to append th2, th3. Now whenever this line gets executed. Okay, inside your table, in the first row, in the first row, one th will be added. Now, whenever this line gets executed, second line, in your first row only, one more th will be added. One more th will be added. And whenever you execute, execute this third line. One more TH will be added. Okay. This is how, this is how internally it is created. Now just see, just to create one simple table in that to create one row and three columns, how much code I have written just to create one table and in that table one row and in that one first row to create three columns this much code i have written
any any doubts up to here any confusion up to here anyone any confusion no sir okay now in this th now in this th do we have any content here do we have any content inside this th there is no content right now i need to add the content inside my th i need to add some content how to add the content th1 dot inner text let's suppose i want to add id in second th2 as a inner text i want to add here something like name in th3 i want to add something like cp or maybe i will add email id name email okay now if i click on this button if i click on this button do you think that table will be created here if i click on this button do you think that table will display here why why table will not be displayed we can't call yeah so basically we created table table is created but that table we did not add it in our dom right inside this body you have to add that table then only that table will be visible on the screen so here what i will do i will take the reference of this body okay now this time i want to take the reference of this body using tag approach okay using tag name now for this body i am not giving i am not giving any id for this body tag i am not giving any id i want to select this body using its tag name so if you want to select any element using its tag name then you have one function called document dot get element by tag name get element sorry get elements it not it is not element remember it is a elements so get element by id in that it is a element but when it, when we are using this function name it's a elements a lot of time people will forget to add yes and it will not work because they will be habituated with get element by id get element by id so there it is a element but here it is a elements get elements by tag name and just pass here your tag name tag name you have to pass body now let's see what it will return what it will return so i will simply say here body reference now what this element is going to return let's see that so i am just doing here console dot log of body ref okay let's see what it will return now if i go back to my browser if i inspect if i go back to my console let's see what it will print here now if i click on get user if i click on this get user now see it is printing something called html html collection nothing but it is printing one array so one point you have to remember whenever you call document dot get elements by tag name and if you pass any tag name it will return one array and in that array whatever elements you have in the document with that name with that tag name all the elements references you will get all the element references you will get okay if you use tag name in that document how many tags you have with that name all those tag references you will get in the array format so here in our document we have only one body element that is the reason inside this array you have only one body suppose let's suppose i have here uh, let me take here multiple buttons suppose here i have one button like this let's suppose i have multiple buttons if i have multiple buttons maybe something like two here maybe something like three maybe something like four now if i save it if i go back to my browser i have multiple buttons suppose i want this button reference and that button reference if i am taking using tag name suppose here if i have given button now let's see what it will print let's see what it will print if i go back here 
if i click on any button now see i got html collections nothing but i got one array in that i have four elements i have all those four buttons if you want to access any button you can access using its index name suppose i want this button okay i want this button so what i will do simply i will say here body ref of one dot style dot color equals to i will say red let's see which element color will change i'm saying one one means in my case it's a second element like if i click on this now see only second button color got changed index zero this is one it means i have accessed second button and i'm saying for my second button you add color as a red you make the its color as a red that is why if you see button color became red if you have only one element then it will return only one element in that array so here i am going with body now so in my entire document i have only one body so it will return only one body in that so what i have to do here i have to say zero so let me remove this part in this body what you need to do to this body you have to append a child what you want to append as a child i want to append as a child this table now let's try now let me remove all these buttons now if i click on this one now see i got one button uh, one table here okay I, in that table i got only one row id name table now i want to add some styles to this table okay so we have here table reference right already we have table reference so what i can do i can say table dot width i can increase the width of my table maybe something like uh, i can increase it to 500 pixel or 800 pixel let's suppose let's see if i click on get user i got 800 pixel for this table let me add frame attribute frame equals to all frame equals to all if i say frame equals to all uh, not all it should be box value should be box i got box i will add rules also table dot rules here i will say all now see here also we got that borders this table i want to keep in the center uh, can i apply margin table dot style dot margin uh, equals to i will say auto i got my table in the center i want to add little bit cell padding so can we try cell padding table dot uh, cell padding okay here we have to take capital p equals to maybe something like 20 pixel now we got cell padding 20 pixel looks very so much maybe i will add 10 pixel now i got 10 pixel now for this first heading or my for first row for tr1 for first row i want to add some background color maybe something like black can i try here black i got black color can we add white tr1 dot style dot color equals to white We got white. We got white. Okay. Now, like this, see, we can add so many styles. Now, this table and these styles are created using JavaScript. These styles and this table we did not create using HTML and CSS. We have created using JavaScript. 
So JavaScript is such a language. You can create entire website with JavaScript. You can create entire website with JavaScript. One table is created. Now what I want to do in this second row, uh, in this second row, I want to create three columns. Now tell me from second row, if you want to create columns, which element we will use from second row. If I want to create columns, which tag we will use or which element we will use. Yes. Now we will use TD. Now, how many TDs I need to create? How many TDs I need to create? Can you guys tell me how many TDs I need to create? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You guys are giving wrong answer. Yeah. I have to create nine TDs, right? For second row three, for third row three, for fourth row three. Totally nine TDs I need to create. So can I create TD now? Can I go just on the top? Where TD1 equals to document dot get uh, create element of td how many td you want like this nine i want means more eight three four five six seven eight nine so here it should be seven here it should be eight here it should be nine okay here it should be two here here it should be three here it should be four here it should be five six now see if i how many tds we created total nine tds we created okay now first this all the td td one two three i should keep in the row two i have to add in the row two so what i can do here so here I can do in TR2, I have to append child. What do you want to append child? TD1. Like this in row two, I need to add two and three. Okay, in the same way, in row three, I need to add here four. In row three, I need to add TD4, here five, six. In TD4 dot, uh, here, TR4 dot FN child, I need to add TD7. TD8, TD9. Okay, whenever you are doing coding, whenever you are doing coding, no need to do everything step by step. Always write the code as per your understanding. Whatever comes in your mind, as per your understanding, write the code. See, here I am drawing the diagram. I am analyzing the thing, what I need to do. According to that, I am writing the code. I am not writing the code from top to bottom. Sometimes I am writing some code on the top, then I am writing some code on the bottom, some code in between. So as per my understanding, I'm writing the code. So every developer will have their own understandings. So if in our class, there are 74 members, then 74 members will have 74 different way of writing the code. So no one writes the code in the same way. Everybody will have different approach. Okay. So always you believe your approach, always write the code exactly the way you are understanding the requirement then you will not feel you will not feel stressed to write the code and you will enjoy writing the code so like this always try to draw the diagrams understand the requirement and slowly slowly write the code you will enjoy the writing the code and you will be able to implement any kind of logics okay just leave about that strike that is vs code issue Okay, those are just VS code issues. Just uh, strike it. I mean, just forgot. It will show something like deprecated, but nothing it is deprecated. It is just VS code issue. 
So here, just we have added it. Now what I need to do in every TD, in every TD, I need to add the content. So in TD one dot inner text, I need to add some content, maybe one, not one. I'm adding one, not one. TD two, TD three in two. I want to add some content here. Maybe something like Raj Verma. Here, see, uh, in third, we have to add email. So Raj at the rate gmail.com. Now let's see whether second row will be created or not. Now see second row is also created. Third row is also created. Fourth row is also created. Now we have added the content here. Now like this, I want to add the content in my Here I want to add my content in sec, uh, this one, TD4 also. Here maybe I need to add something like 102. So in TD5 also I need to add some. In TD6 also I need to add some. 5 and here I need to add something like 6. Here I am adding uh, something like some Ayushi Sharma Ayushi at the rate gmail.com here seven here eight here nine eight here nine here I will add three here some thing like Salman Khan and here Salman at the rate gmail.com. Now if you come back here, now see you got the data. We got here some data. Now see, by default, all TD content will be on the left side. Now, if you want everything on the right, what you can do? You can add some styles for your TR1. So here we can add TR1.align equals to something like center icons. So in row one, all the content will be in the center now. Mm, sorry, TR2 I need to add, not TR1. TR2. Now see, in TR2, all the content are in the center. Same thing I can do for TR3 and TR4. TR3 and TR4. 3 and here 4. Now see, I'm able to create one table. I'm able to create here a table. In that table, I'm able to add my content. Understood how to create like this dynamic table? Just to see, just to create like this simple table, how much code I have written? How much code I have written, see? This much code I have written to write simple table. Can I create one more table? If I click on this button, one more table will be created. Yes, one more table is created. See, if I click on this button, one more table will be created. If I click on this button, one more table will be created. See, now here I am able to reuse my user interface. I am able to create multiple tables just by writing code only for one time. I have written the code only one time to create table, but that code I am able to execute multiple times to create multiple tables. Now in your HTML and CSS, if you want to create like this multiple tables, then what you need to do, 
you have to copy paste your code and you have to paste multiple times you have to copy your code and paste multiple times it means you have to rewrite the code you are rewriting the code here instead of rewriting the code we are reusing the code we are reusing the code But, but there is one problem here. What is that problem? The problem is to create, to create only three rows, I need to write this much code. But suppose if someone asks you to create hundred rows, what you will do? Will you write like this code for hundred rows? Will you create like this hundred rows? Here we have only four rows. Okay, fine. Now in the, in that four rows also, this last three rows are used to display the data. But if someone asks you to create hundred rows, will you create hundred rows? If someone asks you to create thousand rows, will you create thousand rows like this? Again, in thousand rows, you have to create three columns. Again, in that three columns, you have to add data. Then that column you have to keep in row, that row you have to add in table, how much code you have to write. Just imagine, just imagine how much code you have to write. Suppose someone gives you the data set only. Someone is telling that I have a data set. So he's telling that I have a data. Actually, I have an array. In this array, I have, let's suppose, like this, I have 10 objects. Okay. In every object, I have three property name, something like Raj, CT, something like Hyderabad, email something like raj at the rate gmail.com. Let's assume that like this, I have 10 objects with different data. Okay. Now it will waste my time. So I'm just pasting same data, but you just assume that we have different data. Like this, we have so much data of users. Now they are saying that all this data for all this data, you create one table and you display that data in the table. Like this, for every user, you have to create one row. For this user, you have to create one row. For this user, you have to create one row. For this user, you have to create one row. So how many users you will have, that many rows should be created. So today in your array, if I am giving you 20 users information, in this table, I want to see 20 rows. After five days, if I give you 100 users information, then in that table, I want to see 100 rows. So will you create like this manually all the tables? Then in that case, what you will do? In that case, what you will do? So in that case, what we can do, we can go with, we can go with, okay. I will create one more file. Okay. Something like dynamic user. Mm, here I will say dot JS. Here I will paste that. In that case, what we will do means we will go with, we will go with loops concept we will go with loops concept okay now tell me in this entire user interface which part you are repeating which part we need to repeat multiple times based on data which part we need to repeat can you guys guess
yes so based on data we have to create row that to second row and we have to create columns means creating rows and columns from second from second row if you want to create rows and columns it should be automated in some way based on my data it should get automated so in that case we have multiple ways to do that we can go with map method we can go with for each method we can go with for off loop also for off loop also okay so what i will do here so let me just create one more here dynamic user dot html i will copy this code user dot html code as it is i will paste here okay here simply i will say dynamic user dot js okay here also create table function so here also i will add create table i will create one function create table first of all we require table element so i can just copy that table element code from here so this first two lines will be as it is okay after that this table we have to add this code will be as it is so this code also i will add here we have to create in first row we have to create three columns so that three columns will be same nothing but th code i can copy th code also because i need to write this also one time so i need to write as it is inside this th i need to add the data so this code will also be common so this also i will add here as it is now all this th we have to add in tr so if i just scroll down so in tr1 we can add all th okay and now inside this table we have to append child tr1 okay now if i load this dynamic user dot html in my browser it looks something like this okay so here i will just add some different title instead of instead of my first page i will say dynamic creation of table here we got dynamic creation of table now if i click on this get user i got here this one id name email so we can add some styles also styles also we can copy as it is so if i just scroll down here this style logic i will copy as it is so it will be like this okay so till first row till first row we have to write the code till first row creates we have to write the code as it is there is no other excuse we have to write as it is now from second row from second row what we need to do from second row what we need to do okay here i will say here i will write now i need to create rows i need to create rows how many rows i need to create based on my data based on my data how much data i have here how much data i have in this array based on that i need to create rows so in that case can i go with for of can i use for of here i will say let user of data 
what this fur off will do in this array it will pick the first element that element will come here and this for loop will be called and once you have your element what you need to do you have to simply create one row you have to create one row then you have to create three columns okay i will just write uh, three columns document dot create element like this i need to create three columns now all these columns i need to add in my row so tr dot append child of td1 like this i need to add all the columns in my tr here td2 here td3 then this tr i need to add in my table table dot append child of tr now inside this td td1 i need to add some content and that content i can access from this user so simply because now user will be one object so simply i can say user dot name in the same way in td2 i can say user dot uh, sorry here id here name here city and here it should be td2 it should be td3 now let me check whether i am using proper key names name ct email i have name ct email so i have to change it to name ct email so here it should be name here it should be ct and here it should be mail i have to send my i have to change my headings also right so here it should be name here it should be ct now if i go back here if i click on this now see we got like this raj v hyderabad undefined let me see why undefined we got email okay here small e here email so we created one row in that we have again we created td so here again mistake i did it should be td it should be td it should be td then in td1 td2 td3 inner text inner text i have to add data inside tr i have to all add td1 td2 td3 and inside table i have to add tr now it should work let's see now it is working now all this tr i want exactly in the center so for that tr we can add some style tr dot align equals to center now see i just written code only for one time from second row i just wrote the code only for one time and that same code we are reusing for all the data now see all my rows are created now in this file how many lines of code we have written around 113 lines of code in previous file how many lines of code we have written uh, here we have less here it is showing less okay because here i have added more space here we have this array right because of that now if i remove this array now basically how many lines of code we might have written here here we have just written around 51 lines of code and here we have written nearly 83 lines of code so from 83 we are able to reduce we are able to reduce to 
we are able to reduce to 51. So this is how your loops will help us. Loops, conditions will help us to do so many things. Now you can just change your data set. Your data will be reflected here. Now how many rows you will add in that array, that many it will create. For example, let's suppose I am removing this all the data. Okay, let's suppose I am removing all this data. So how many objects I have? One, two, three, four. Only four objects I have. So here one, two, three, four. Only four objects I have. Now if I go back here and if I click on this get users, only four rows are created. One, two, three, four. Only four rows are created. Now if I increase, if I increase my data, suppose if I, if I am adding two more objects here. Save it. If I go back here and if I click on get users, now see one, two, three, four, five, six, two more rows got added. Now I need not to change my code. My co I am not changing my code. Now you give me 100 users information or 10,000 users information or 10 users information. So based on your data, I am creating the rows. Based on your data, I am creating the rows. Okay, so this is how we create the dynamic user interface using your JavaScript, using your JavaScript. Okay, so I will push this code. So just go and practice. It is very, very important guys. You should know how to create dynamic user interface using JavaScript. It will really help you to understand react and angular in future in future if you are planning to learn react and angular then it will help you this concept will help you so in tomorrow's session uh, we will explore about the events and event handlers uh, in javascript and if 